here's the must-have intro. I am Nele, founder of NutriPlanet, and on my blog and YouTube channel you will find gluten-free whole food plant-based recipes, practical tips for those transitioning to plant-based lifestyle, free guide to candida overgrowth, and meal plans for both whole food plant-based and vegan candida diet. Welcome to this second porridge video of the series of four. In the first video I guided you through the seven steps to make healthy balanced porridge. We covered selecting the grains and quantities, choosing liquids and preparation methods, adding healthy fats, spices and boosters, veggies, fruits and berries, and finally toppings. In today's video I'll show you step by step how to make the best out of each preparation method. We'll cover simply soaking, just cooking, soaking and blending, soaking and cooking, and finally soaking, blending and cooking. The next video will be all about low-carb porridges, and the last one introduces you to savoury porridges. So let's get on with it! Simply soak. Suitable grains are raw buckwheat and the oat family, oatmeal, which is made by using grooved rolls to break up the oats to produce different grades of oatmeal from coarse to medium or fine. Then chamber rolled oats, whole oats that have been softened with steam and then flattened between rollers to make flakes. And finally rolled oats that are steel cut oats that have been softened with steam and then rolled to produce flakes. So let's make overnight oats. Pour desired amount of rolled oats into a bowl, container or jar. I used 50 grams here. Add one to two tablespoons of ground flax or chia or a gumbo of both. Give it a stir. Next, go in desired spices and boosters. You can learn all about those from the previous video, how to make balanced porridge. I use cinnamon, cardamom, cloves, turmeric and ginger here. Again, mix it up real well. Now add water and plant-based milk or only one. Give it a good stir and keep adding liquid until the consistency is a bit runnier than you'd like the finished porridge to be. The amount depends on your own preferences as well as used add-ins. For example, ground chia seeds absorb much more liquid than flax. Don't add any salt at this stage as salt inhibits liquid absorption. When you're okay with the consistency, cover the jar, bowl or container with lid and keep it in fridge overnight or longer. When you take it out, give it another stir to see whether you need to add more water or milk. This is also the moment for final touches, such as sprinkling some Himalayan salt or boosting it with some more spices. Just have a taste and adjust accordingly. And now you can let your imagination go wild. I poured some of homemade plum jam in the bottom of a jar. Then added the overnight oats and topped it off with red currants, cacao nips and pumpkin seeds. Go and watch the previous video for detailed overview about spices, boosters, sweeteners, fruits, berries, veggies and toppings. Simply cooking. Let's move on to the next method. The most common way to make porridge is simply cooking. You can do that with porridge flakes, any kind, steel cut oats, rolled oats, oatmeal, Simply follow the instructions on the package. Semolina and flowers. Semolina is basically a coarse grind of a grain or corn. I use the following trick to make really smooth flour porridges. I take the flour, put it in the glass and gradually start pouring water while whisking until I get homogeneous batter. And then I pour this into boiling water while whisking. And finally, pre-roasted buckwheat that is used to make kasha. I'll now show you step by step how I make porridge with a combo of rolled oats and oat bran. I used 30 grams of both rolled oats and oat bran, added 200 grams of water and gave it a stir. I let it sit for 5 minutes to let the oats absorb some water. Then brought to boil and whisked every now and then. When it became quite thick I poured in half cup soy milk brought it to boil again and cooked for a few more minutes. The overall cooking time was about 5 minutes. Before adding anything else, I let it sit covered for a few minutes. Next, I mixed in spices and boosters. I craved for chocolatey porridge and therefore I threw in 1 tablespoon of each. Cacao powder, mesquite and carob. 
Additionally, one teaspoon of barley grass powder, half teaspoon cinnamon, quarter teaspoon of ginger cardamom and turmeric, and finally a pinch of cloves. Next up were healthy fats. I went for one tablespoon of ground flax and one tablespoon of chia seeds. You may use only one. I also added as much old milk as necessary for desired consistency. Okay, now that the porridge is in the bowl, we can start with toppings. The most of citrus fruit power is in the zest. So I decided to add a bit of homemade orange peel powder that goes so well with chocolatey flavor. I link to my video on how to make citrus peel powder at home in the description below. Then I thought some cranberries, white blueberries and blackberries. The darker the berries, the more antioxidant bang you get. You may also throw frozen berries straight onto your porridge or mix them in. I just prefer them thawed. Some more healthy fats, namely soaked and dehydrated sunflower seeds and a small handful of gochi berries. Did you know that gochi berries have the highest concentration of melatonin, hormone that regulates the sleep-wake cycle, and the third highest antioxidant capacity of common dried fruits? Yay for gochis! Okay, this porridge is super loaded now, so let's dig in. You can flavor your porridge with anything you like. Get detailed info from my previous video. Soak and blend. Soak and blend method basically applies to raw buckwheat only. And it's my favorite method in summer, as it's nutritious and hearty, as well as cold and refreshing. Theoretically, you could blend your soaked overnight oats as well, if you want your porridge to be extra creamy. Now, let me walk you through the making of raw buckwheat porridge. Start by soaking buckwheat groats for at least 4 hours, better 6 to 8. I used 100 grams, then rinse them well as they get quite slimy. You could make an extra effort and sprout the buckwheat before blending, giving the nutritional value an additional boost and lowering glycemic load. Transfer into blender or beaker, add any frozen or fresh berries. I went for wild blueberries, a small banana cut into chunks, about two tablespoons coconut milk, that's optional, and then some water or plant milk for desired consistency. Try to add as little as possible in the beginning, not to make it too runny. And then it's down to blending. I must admit I accidentally added a bit too much of water, but fixed it by blending in some psyllium husks. Coconut flour would have been an excellent option as well. You can make this porridge in bigger batches and store in fridge for easy breakfast, snacks or dessert. Garnish with some extra berries or fruits, fresh or frozen, and nuts and seeds. My nine-year-old basically inhaled those two jars. Soak and cook. You can tick off most grains here. Raw buckwheat, amaranth, millet, kamut, barley, oat, whole grain rice, and various types of oats, steel-cut oats, oatmeal, quinoa. I'll show you step by step how I make amaranth oat bran porridge using soak and cook method. First, soak amaranth overnight. Yes, this is millet, but you get the point. The easiest way to rinse amaranth is to use a sieve. You can't use the lead trick here as amaranth berries are so tiny and would simply slip through straight down the sink. I used 30 grams of amaranth and put them to boil with 150 grams of water. I let them cook covered for 5 minutes and then added 30 grams of oat bran. Make sure to whisk well to avoid any bran chunks. Next. I poured in half cup soy milk and gave it a good stir. I let it simmer covered for another 5 minutes, whisking the porridge every now and then as soon as it started sticking to the bottom of the pot. When the porridge was done, I let it sit covered for a few minutes before mixing in 2 tablespoons of ground flax seeds, half tablespoon mesquite powder, 1 teaspoon barley grass powder, half teaspoon cinnamon and turmeric, quarter tablespoon of each ginger cardamom and agar agar and finally one eighth teaspoon of cloves and himalayan salt i added oat milk to compensate all those dry ingredients and ended up using 150 grams this may vary though and now let's top it here are some thawed wild blueberries and blackberries let's pour those on then a tablespoon of soaked and dehydrated pumpkin seeds and finally, frozen raspberries. Again, 
you don't have to use the same spices and boosters. Use your imagination. However, I'd recommend adding some. Learn the reasons from my previous video, 7 steps to balanced porridge. Soak, blend, cook. And we are at the final method that is most probably unknown to many of you. I first tried blended batters for pancakes, breads and cakes and then thought why not make porridge as well. I recommend this method to those who enjoy porridges made of flour for their creaminess. With my method you get as good result but with a much healthier porridge. It's because soaking enhances mineral absorption and makes the grains overall easier to digest. The grains you can use for soak, blend and cook method include raw buckwheat, quinoa, amaranth, millet, whole grain rice, steel cut oats, Oatsberry and barley grout porridges will not be as creamy but a bit chunky as oats and barley are harder than other grains. As amaranth berries are already so tiny, you won't get a much creamier result but you can use it anyway for this method. Now I'll show you how to make millet and oat bran porridge using soak, blend and cook method. First. I soak 30 grams of millet overnight or at least for a few hours. Then I blend them with a bit less than 200 grams of water. You may also use a combo of water and plant milk. Notice how milky it looks. If you drain the liquid, you'd get millet milk. Next, I transfer the mixture into my cooking pot. It's important to give it a stir before pouring as millet is heavy and sinks to the bottom. Now I bring it to boil, stirring it constantly as the fine millet sticks very quickly to the bottom of the pot. And then add 30 grams of oat bran. I cook it for 5 minutes, whisking almost constantly. It's so so silky and creamy. When the porridge is done, I let it sit covered for a few minutes and then whisk in the spices and salt. I use cinnamon, cardamom and ginger. The key to fluffy porridge is whisking really vigorously. Then I boost it up with 2 tablespoons of ground flax seeds and quarter teaspoon of agar agar. At this point I also add some plant milk as the porridge is getting quite thick. By the way, agar agar is here for iodine only. It doesn't have any other purpose. Add as much plant milk as necessary for desired consistency. I personally don't like very thick sticky porridges. My trick to cool the porridge down quicker is to pour it into my bowl from really high. You must be careful though not to miss the target. Now look at this creaminess. Let's add half a small bowl of wild blueberries. I love the juice I get when thawing the berries. I also sprinkle on some healthy fats, pumpkin seeds that have been soaked and dehydrated to boost mineral absorption and make them more easily digestible. And voila! Here you have another nutritious porridge to enjoy. Now I'd like to know whether you knew about all those methods. How many of those have you used to make porridge? And which is your favorite? Let me know in the comments section. As repetition is the mother of learning, let's go over the five methods once more. First, simply soaking applies to raw buckwheat and various oats. Secondly, Simply cooking is great for the grains that don't necessarily require pre-soaking, such as rolled oats, oatmeal, raw buckwheat, or any porridge flakes, semolinas and flours. Thirdly, soaking and blending suits the grains that don't need to be cooked, such as raw buckwheat and rolled oats. Next, Soaking and cooking is a great option for most grains as soaking enhances mineral absorption and makes the grains easier to digest. And finally, soaking, blending and cooking is such a treat for those craving for those extra creamy porridges but wishing to go for less refined ingredients that flowers can be. So here you have it. Stay tuned for the last two videos in this series, how to make low-carb porridges and the wonderful world of savory porridges. Now I really look forward to your comments. You can't imagine how much I appreciate those. After all, without your feedback, I'd grope about blindly. 
And of course, if you like the recipes and other content I'm creating, I welcome you among my subscribers. There's the button somewhere, and then there's the magical bell button for notifications.